Greetings from Academia IUPSM eConnect. This channel represents an initiative eConnect of Academia IUPSM brought to you all with an aim to engage students, experts and citizens around pressing public health issues. Subsequent to the public health update series of the month of September 2021, we, the team Vanguards, humbly present before you the public health update series for the month of October 2021. The contents of this video will be dealt with in four parts. The first part will focus on communicable diseases. The second on national health policies. The third on national formulary of India. And in the fourth part, we'll be discussing some of the important public health days of October month. So without further ado, let's move on to the first section of this video, which is communicable diseases. A very warm welcome to everyone viewing this capsule. Myself, Dr. Astha Kalra from r &D Medical College, Rajasthan. The first part of this capsule has updates regarding communicable diseases. And I would begin my discussion with the malaria vaccine. Malaria vaccine has been long awaited worldwide. There are many candidates underway. Most of these target only a single stage in the life cycle of malarial parasite. Experts are also looking for candidates that could target the multiple stages. In a breakthrough, addition of an unfused HPS AG surface antigen could bring about a good zero conversion of the RTSS vaccine. Subsequently, on 6th October 2021, this made it world's first malaria vaccine to be approved by WHO and to be recommended for high to moderate malaria burden areas in the sub-Saharan Africa. The name RTSS is representative of the genes from which this vaccine has been derived. The R in the name stands for repeat region, T for T lymphocyte epitopes of the pre-erythrocytic circumsporozoid protein, the CSP. CSP is the target of immune response. The S is the name of surface portion of viral surface antigen of hepatitis B virus. The second N S in the name represents the additional unfused HBS AG unit. The vaccine is administered as a dose of 0.5 ml IM, preferably on deltoid, in three primary doses, each four weeks apart, at the age of five to nine months. Another dose as booster is given at 17 months of age. The vaccine has tolerable side effects and an efficacy of 30%. Even with such moderate efficacy, in absence of any other effective tools, the introduction of this vaccine makes sense for Sub-Saharan Africa. Now, moving on its implications in India. India, country per se, has low endemicity for malaria. But there are geographic areas in which there, India has very high malaria transmission. This vaccine would better fit to be pilot tested in such areas to check its feasibility and effectiveness. At present, several manufacturing companies in India are also working on either developing or manufacturing the anti-malarial vaccine. The next update is regarding surveillance of infectious diseases. One Health is a holistic health concept which was the basis of rabies elimination model. On 15th October 2021, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India launched India's first One Health Consortium which comprised of 27 organizations including Ames Delhi, Ames Jodhpur, ICMR, Indian Council of Agricultural Research and various wildlife agencies. 
it looks into use of existing diagnostic tests and development of methodologies for the surveillance of emerging infectious diseases in order to minimize the damage caused by further possible pandemics. I will be continuing on the section of communicable disease with the topic pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. The universal immunization program of Government of India has been expanding with the introduction of newer vaccines recently. In continuation with this, there was a need to offer vaccination against pneumonia also. Pneumonia is responsible for 17% of total under 5 mortality in India and amongst that streptococcus pneumonia is responsible for 30% of pneumonia death in children. The pneumococcal conjugate vaccine has already been widely used in the private sector for the children. On the recommendation of National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, pneumococcal conjugate vaccine PCV13 was implemented in five states in few years. Expanding on the coverage, on 29th of October, the Government of India launched nationwide expansion of the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine under Universal Immunization Program. PCV will be administered in two primary doses at 6 weeks and 14 weeks, followed by a booster dose at 9 months with MR vaccine under the program. The second section is on national health policies. I will be continuing with PMASBY. Pradhan Mantri Atmanirbar Swast Bharat Yojana COVID-19 pandemic has shown the wide existing gaps in health infrastructure in our country. Addressing this, Honorable Prime Minister launched PMASBY on 25th October in Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. It is also known as Aishman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission. It is a large pan-India scheme for strengthening healthcare infrastructure across the country. The key initiatives under this are support for infrastructure for buildingless sub-health centers to be transformed into Aishman Bharat Health and Wellness Centers to achieve the target of 1.5 lakhs by December 2022. Proposal is for restructuring and strengthening of urban health and wellness centers block community health centers to be transformed as block public health units in 3,382 blocks in the 11 high focus site states. District integrated public health laboratories that is IPHL in 730 districts to establish 380 new and strengthen 350 existing labs. Thus, this initiative is addressing gaps at many levels in the health care system starting from primary care to apex institutes. Healthcare workers came in direct contact while providing medical care to the COVID-19 patients and hence were at very high risk of being impacted by it. In March 2020, Government of India announced a comprehensive personal accident cover of Rs 50 lakhs to 22.12 lakh healthcare workers under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Package 21st October 2021 marked a 180-day extension to its tenure. This was done in order to extend this cover during the anticipated third wave of the pandemic also. I am Dr. Snehalata from Mysore Medical College and Research Institute, Karnataka. The next update is a report on health insurance by Neeti Ayog titled Health Insurance for India's Missing Middle released on 29th of October this year. According to this report, nearly 70% of Indian population is protected by health insurance. The lower 50% is covered by government schemes and the top 20% is covered through social and private policies. However, Nearly 30% lack any form of health protection, which is referred to as India's missing middle. And India's out-of-pocket expenditure is estimated to be 63% of the current health spending. The Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India has mandated all insurance companies to provide the Arogya Sanjeevani policy from April 2020, which has relatively lower rates of premium and provides standardized benefits that are uniform throughout the nation. However, it does not cover outpatient expenses, which is in fact a large financial burden. This report suggests 
that there is a need for a comprehensive health insurance scheme that builds upon the existing Arogya Sanjeevani policy and also offers outpatient cover. The ultimate aim of this report is to encourage a discussion between the policy makers and the private sector on designing a solution to cover India's missing middle. Moving on, our next update comes from the Ministry of Jal Shakti, Department of Drinking Water and Sanitation. Jal Jeevan Mission was launched in India in 2019 with an aim to provide FHTCs, that is Functional Household Tap Connections, to every rural household in the country by 2024. As on 1st of October 2021, this coverage had increased from 17% to 43% since launch. However, about 24.4% of our villages still do not have access to piped water supply. To further boost this mission, our Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi on the 2nd of October this year launched the Rashtriya Jaljeevan Kosh and the Jaljeevan Mission mobile application. Rashtriya Jaljeevan Kosh is a public charitable trust where any individual or any institution can donate money which will be used to provide tap water connection in the villages of donor's choice. These donations are eligible for 50% deduction under Section ATG of Income Tax Act. The Jal Jeevan Mission app, available for Android devices on Play Store, is developed with an intention to create connectivity and bring transparency and accountability among its stakeholders. Through its dashboard, the users can get real-time data of coverage of tap water connections from national to village level. It also provides details of water samples received and tested across the labs. And other useful information and links are also available here. The next update is on the National Formulary of India. The Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission is an autonomous institution created to set standards of drugs in the country. Among its various roles, the Commission periodically releases the National Formulary of India, which is meant for the guidance of medical professionals. It presents clinically relevant information pertaining to the prescribing and dispensing of the drugs. The sixth edition of NFI was released on 29th October 2021. So what is new in this edition? Revision of 17 chapters by subject experts. NFI is now aligned with National Health Programs and National Essential Medicine List. There's a separate chapter on management of diabetes and basics of medical emergency for healthcare professionals. It is expected that this new edition will help in promoting rational use of medicines in the country. Hello, I'm Dr. Rama Swadika from RMMCH Tamil Nadu. I shall be discussing the important health days in the month of October and updates pertaining to it. In recent years, digital innovations have helped improve all sectors of society. However, 94% elderly are digitally illiterate in India due to lack of access and participation. Every year, 1st October is observed as the United Nations International Day of Older Persons and aptly, this year's theme was Digital Equity of All Ages. The major objective of this year's day is to bring awareness on digital inclusion of older persons through face-to-face -face or digital contact, promoting age-friendly environment, and bringing laws and policies to foster social connections. Mental illness doesn't define you, but we still should talk about it. Prevalence of mental illness accounts for 13.7% in India and 59% reported lack of any de-addiction services in India. World Mental Health Day observed on 10th October and the theme was Mental Health in an Unequal World. It aims to raise awareness of the inequality in access to mental health care both locally and globally for marginalized people. In view of this, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare launched Green Ribbon Initiative to raise awareness on mental health on October 8th this year. Green Ribbon is the symbol of mental health awareness. It is an essential component to address the stigma surrounding it. Other Indian initiatives to improve mental health are Kiran Helpline, a 24-7 toll-free helpline to provide support to people facing anxiety, stress, depression, 
suicidal thoughts and other mental health concerns nimhans ra app one step source of data on mental health centers and professionals developed by the nimhans the unprecedented nature of the ongoing covid-19 pandemic continues to highlight the critical role of hand hygiene hand washing is the first line defense in preventing outbreaks hence this year's the global hand washing day theme is our future is at our hand let's move forward together observed on 15th october this year the key messages on this day are apart from generating awareness improve access to hand washing facilities is likely to have a long term impact on behavior change investment in hygiene infrastructure and products must be accelerated in homes schools healthcare settings and public places since a large part of hand hygiene expenditure is borne by families the government expenditure on this area has to increase to make it more sustainable thank you with this we conclude the public health update series for the month of october 2021 our team the vanguards comprises of dr astha kalra dr imran barmawala dr n rama swatika dr emmanuel joshua and myself dr snehalata bm a special word of gratitude to dr emmanuel joshua for his help with the powerpoint and the visuals At this point, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our mentor, Dr. Malathi M, for all her valuable inputs and her constant support and motivation. We would also like to sincerely thank our advisors, Dr. Malathi Shundi, Dr. Sanjeev Kumar, Dr. Parag Chawda, and Dr. A M Kadri for their invaluable support and for bringing us all to this platform. A special word of thanks to Dr. Kaushik Sarkar for his help with the malaria vaccine update. We would also like to extend our sincere gratitude to the senior IAPSM office bearers. Thank you all for your time. We will soon come out with the public health update for the month of November 2021. Kindly subscribe to our channel Academia IAPSM E Connect and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Until we meet again, stay connected, stay safe.